Hi, welcome to another training session. My name's Simon. We're going to look at Microsoft Publisher. I've got Publisher just up here. Uh, as you can see, it's a nice and basic desktop publisher provided by Microsoft. Now, it's true it's not as comprehensive as some of the other ones like InDesign or Quark Express. However, it's a really good tool for the job. And as you get it free with Microsoft Office, most of the packages that you get, um, enterprise or professional, etc., you'll get that. And even the standard version, I think you get Microsoft Publisher with. You might as well use it to create something such as this which is a book cover so this is all just made up and complete fiction but the idea is you might want to do a book for print or you might want to do a book for publishing and in fact a client asked about this earlier on so we're going to create this from scratch hopefully it will look very similar and um, and hope you enjoy the video and please subscribe please like please bear with us so just to I um, give you an idea of what we're going to go through is we're going to create the guides and the margins as well so we can talk a bit about bleed to talk about the page size as well talk about the spine uh, as well there just lining things up and just basic stuff like that talking about stacking order so we'll also look at creating rectangles and transparency at the background just to give you some tips to bring your text out of the page just talking about writing text changing the font and the font size of the text as well and also a little bit about getting your pictures to fit on the page so that they aren't dwarfing the page so we've got a lot to get through so let's get started so here we go well first thing we decide on our page size as we can see at the top we've got a4 portrait we've got a4 landscape etc uh, if i want to i can go back to file and new to go and create a new publication so a4 landscape is probably the one uh, that i'm wanting to do in this instance here that's great so depending on your units of measurement as well you might want to set that up so if you need to set up your new units of measurement i'm going to use centimeters you go to file just at the top here and go down to options and then under advanced here at the bottom here where it says show measurement units if i just scroll across here there we go it's quite clear you can choose centimeters from the drop down list that you can see uh, you can have inches centimeters picas points or pixels so i'm going to take centimeters in here now i need to remember that there are 10 millimeters per centimeter because i use a lot of millimeters in my calculations and in my measurements there so let's click on ok fantastic all right so the first thing that we need to sort out here is a bleed area so if this is going to be the front page for instance the page is going to be a4 in size and that's going to be the total width of the page and i want a bleed area of three millimeters well what i can do is i can adjust the size of the page as well it's all under page design i can go to page and i can set up when i go to page setup I can change this width and the height of the page here. So what you would do here is you would get out your ruler, you would measure the exact total width of the cover of the publication. So here we have a publication here is a classroom in a book, an Adobe Animate book. So what you would do is you get your ruler out and you would measure from this side. Let me just say. So you would measure basically here from this side here all the way across to this side here, including the spine. And then you would put that in the width and the height you would measure from here to here and you would put that in the height and in that way you can make sure that you can get a publication of this size there so we're just going to take an a4 size i'm not going to make it com um, as complicated as we need to uh, or more complicated than we need with the margin guides here i'm going to use that as the bleed i'm going to type in 0.3 0.3 0.3 0.3 uh, for three or millimeters of bleed or 0.3 centimeters of bleed so when I click on OK here and I look at the margins, you can see here that I have three millimeters of bleed. So the bleed area, what's that? Well, basically, there's no such thing as edge to edge printing. So when you print on a piece of paper, what will generally happen is the printer will overprint the edge and then it will get trimmed. So we will design to the bleed area or to right to the outside of the page. And then what we'll do is we'll send it to a commercial printer. We can send it to an online printer or whatever. And then they will trim it to the bleed line, which is just here. We just have to let the printers know that that is the bleed line. Okay, excellent. So what we'll do now is we need to know where the central part of this uh, page is. Well, this is where you'll do a little bit of calculations. So if you remember, if we went to page design and we went to... Um, like the size and then went to page setup here we've got the total width of the page i don't know you can see that there 
the width of the page I've typed in, or it's A4 page, it's 29.7 centimeters or 297 millimeters. So this is where we can get our calculator out. So I'm just going to go down to click on OK for that, just to acknowledge that. Going to go down to the bottom just here uh, and going to get off to the calculator. Let's have a look. Calculator. Here we go. There we go. So just bring up the calculator. So what was it? 29.7 divided by 2 equals 14.85 so port 14.85 is where the guide should be for the central point of the book so if you think of this book as i've just shown you this one just here so if you want the central point just down here and this book was 29.7 centimeters wide the central point there will be 14.85 so let's put that one in shall we so i'm just going to right click and go to um uh, click on actually guides just here rather and go down to ruler guides and click on vertical because I want the guides to go up and down. So the first one we want is 14.85. Click on set, click on OK, and there we go. So we know that that guide is right in the middle. So how wide do we need the spine? How much we do, do we need that? So say, for instance, depending on the number of pages that we've got here, and you can go online and I'll show you a link to go to find out how thick, basically depending on how many pages that you've got in your book, how thick your spine needs to be. Uh, but for the time being, let's just say, for instance, it's um, going to be one centimeter. Yeah, let's just going to say it's going to be one centimeter there. So basically it's 50 um, so it's going to be five millimeters one way, five millimeters the other way. So what we will do here is put in the guides again. So if we go to guides and go to ruler guides, go to vertical, and we can see we've got the 14.85. So let's just add another one in. So it doesn't need too much uh, here to work out that if you want to add in, uh, let's have a look here. Oh, let's do it as a centimeter. We'll make it nice and easy here. So if I click in here and I want one on the right hand side and then there we go and then I want one on the left hand side and we type in 13 and then click on set brilliant so now I've got um, three guides here one on the leftmost edge one in the center point here so I know the center point and one on the rightmost edge there click on OK and you can see I've got the central point there so that little bit is this section here of the book be honest with this one here i don't really need that central one anymore it's superfluous i'm going to keep it anyway just so i can do other calculations with it but uh, it's not really necessary and you don't need to worry about the guides they won't print that's great excellent so the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to bring a title in inserting a text box so let me just drag myself down here to insert a text box you click on the insert tab just at the top so this insert tab give that a click then all the way on the, well, not all the way, but just across to the right there, you can see draw text box. You've got the draw text box just there. So click on draw text box. And then I'm just going to draw text box all the way from width to width. There we go. And then I'm going to type in the name of the book, which is The Stranger. So here we go. This is the name of the book. If I need to change the text in any way, I can highlight it. I can either use this little menu that pops up to change the font type if I want to here, or if I want to be sure of be going to a place that will always exist and always appear no matter what, I can go to the menu just up here at the top. So you can see I can go to that menu there. All right, let's have a look here and I can click down. It's got Calibri at the moment. I'm not a great fan of that. So I'm going to go and find one called Arial Black if I can find it here. There we go, Arial Black. There's the stranger. That's good. Now the font size, what I can do is I can click on the drop down list just to the right of the font type here. You can see, so if I uh, look down here, I can see the various font sizes. But uh, sometimes you don't get the exact size. Sometimes people think, well, hang on a second. If I go 72, whoa, that's way too big. But if I then go to 48, it might be that I want a little bit bigger. So what you can do here is you can click on 48 and you can type in an exact amount. So you can see in this example here, I've typed in 55 that's a little bit too much now let's type 52 in there we go and it's just squeezed the stranger there i'm just going to move the text box down a little bit so the way, way i do that is go to the border i find that many people they get a bit confused about moving text boxes around so if, they, if you're new to this 
and you're finding this a little difficult, just make sure you go to the border of the text box and try to move the text box by using its border. Now notice where I'm clicking, I'm not clicking where there's a resize handle, not looking at the white, I'm looking at the solid border. So I click and hold my mouse button down and I can drag the stranger just down the page assigning on where I want to put it. Great, excellent. So sometimes we have to put a, a picture into more to if we, we need to really understand where we're going to put our text first of all we need to put a picture in so i'm just going to leave the text for the time being the stranger that's fine uh, if i wanted to draw another text box i can do let's give it a go insert draw text box and i can do one in the bottom right hand corner and just type in the author meet my name here as the author that's good say for instance i wanted to match this font here's a nice little trick i can highlight the font here and then on the home tab there's an option called format painter I can then use the format painter to highlight the text that I want to copy the format to. Needless to say that the format is a little big, so I'm just going to use this here to reduce this button just at the top. I don't know if you can see here, the little A with a little drop down arrow next to it. It just reduces the size of my font. As I click on it, it reduces it. I can increase it here like so. Next thing I want to do is I can adjust the text box as well to fit snugly around the text. I can use the white resize handles so these ones here I can use to fit the text. So I use those white resize handles to reshape or resize the text box. So I can go down and I can just resize that to get it to fit here. And if I want to be absolutely sure that it's in the center, I can under the drawing, sorry, text box tools format tab at the top, I can click on this central button of the align center here. So please note that this this format tab will only appear when I've got the text box selected. Please note, if I click off of the text box, notice the format tab, it's gone. It's not there at the top. You see, if I click back on the text box, I can see the format tab here at the top. So I get to see that there. So they're what's known as contextual tabs. So they will only appear when I need to use them. So it's just something to bear in mind there. So again, I've clicked on this, I clicked on the center and it makes my name appear in the center of the text box. And I'm just going to go to the border and just move my name down to the bottom right hand corner. I'm gonna do the same with the title of the book here. That's great, excellent. So next thing I need to do is bring in a picture. So how do I do that? Let's just move myself over here, just get myself out of the way there. So making sure I've got nothing selected, I'm going to click on insert at the top. So the insert tab and then on pictures just here. So insert and then pictures. So I click on pictures and then I'm going to look for a picture. So on my folder, I have a picture called mystery man. You can use any picture you want. I'll try and include this picture on here. I just one I just got from the web. There's the mystery man there. So let me just zoom back. Now, the way I'm zooming in and out is by using the wheel on my mouse. Can you see that there? I'm using this wheel here on the mouse as I'm holding down the control key on the keyboard. So I hold the control key down, use the wheel on the mouse. And as I roll back, you see it zooms all the way out. And as I roll away from me, it zooms in. Just give that one a quick go, zooming in and out. So you get very familiar uh, with using that. It will save you a tremendous amount of time. So let's just zoom back a little bit. And what I need to do is I'm just going to go to the corner of the picture. I'm going to drag the corner of the picture and I'm just going to hold the control key down at the same time. And what that does is that resizes the picture from the central point. So I'm just going to make that a little bigger, just a little bigger. So it just goes to the edge of the picture. And there we have it there. That's great. So at this moment in time, the picture is overlaying the entire page. Well, I don't want it to do that. I just want to resize the picture not resize it in as much as changing the actual overall dimensions but i need to crop the picture so that it fits on the page so this is how i do it so i'm going to go up and click on the picture make sure i've got the picture tools contextual tab available at the top there so you can see the picture tools tab available remember if you don't see this tab that means you haven't got the picture selected when you click on the picture you can see the picture tools tab there so you You've got picture tools and format and over on the right hand side i have the crop button so i want you to click on the crop button so when i click on the crop button please note that you have these little sort of arrow oops sorry. yeah you've got these little type of 
black lines in the corners and on the edges there. These are your little crop markers and you can use those to crop the picture. So what do I mean by that? Well, as I said before, the picture is a little too wide. So what I'm going to do is hover over this left one just here. Click and hold your mouse button down and then just drag in. And what I need to do is line this up with the left edge of the page as best as I can. There we go. I'm going to do the same with the right. So I'm going to click and then just drag this and right, get it to the right hand side of the page as best as I can there. There we go. The top and the bottom should be just fine. So if I drag down and up, I can do the top. And if I drag down and up again, I can, or up and down as well, I can see the bottom. There we go. There we go. So I can line this up. So now I know that that is fitting on my page. Now, it might be that I just want to move this left and right a little bit. I don't want the center part of this peak of this hood to come over the middle, the spine bit of the uh, book. I don't want it to come up over this bit here of the book. I don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and hold with the mouse and just move a bit down to the left so it just makes sure that the whole picture is on the front page. And remember, this part here is going to be the front of my book. If you imagine how a book opens, you've got the book here like so, and the book will open this way. So it opens like so. Great, that looks really good. Now you've got to be careful. If I move too far, then I create a gap over this side here, and that's going to be, look a bit it's unsightly. So I just want to make sure that the book covers the whole page. So just drag back, and there we go, just down a tad. That's fantastic. When I finish, I can click on the crop button again, and that's good. So now I can see my uh, picture. Now I've got to look very closely because sometimes if I just zoom in here, just hold down the wheel on the mouse and zoom in. It's just um, let's just click over here, go over here, and just pan across to the right here. You can see there's a tiny little gap. I don't know if you can see there. There's a little tiny gap to the right there. So I'm just going to click on the picture. Make sure I'm on the Format tab. Go to Crop and just drag that out ever so slightly. That's good. Let me just do that again. So here we go. That's it. Just go back. Click on my crop. There we go. There we go. Just drag that out ever so slightly. So there's no gap. I don't want any gap. I prefer to it to be overprinted rather than uh, a gap. That's great. Let's click on that. Um, shortcut key, Control, Shift, and L allows me to see the whole screen. But if you're used to the wheel on the mouse and using the Control key, just use that. That's fine. So now you might have noticed a problem. Okay, the picture is 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 the right size for the book or the book cover. But the problem is, is it's covering my text. So I need to send the picture to the back. So how do I do that? So I've got the picture selected. Make sure the picture is selected on um, Picture Tools Format. I have Send Backward. But notice there's a tiny little drop down arrow just to the right of send backward. What you need to do is click on that drop down arrow and we're going to go send to back. And notice I can see my text here and my author, my name here as the author of the book. That's great. Excellent. So what I've got here is um, um, some black text on some rather dark background. So again, not the best. I'm just going to change the color of the text. Highlight the text here and I'm going to shift. Highlight the text here, change the color to white. I'm going to highlight this text here and change the color to white so I can see that. And there we go. Brilliant. So far, so good. So it's all coming together. Now, the other thing is, is I need to have the text to be rotated. I want to rotate the text so that it can be on the spine of the book. So let's deal with the rotating it and the, uh, the text first, and then we'll deal with positioning the text. So first things first, I don't want to be able to write this text. I don't have to, you know, want to have to do that again. So I'm going to copy this text. So I click on the border. I'm going to right click and go to copy. I'm going to right click anywhere else and go to paste. So now I have an exact, oops, let's make sure I get the right text box. Go to the border. There we go. There we go. So there we have, I've got an exact copy of my text that was on the title of my book. So I want to rotate the text now to rotate it and put it onto the spine. So for that, I'm going to use the rotate button. So I'm going to click and hold the rotate button and then rotate the text. So if I go to over here with my mouse, click and hold my mouse button down and then I can drag around just around here to rotate the text and then it should snap into place and there we have it. So how do I know if it's lining up with my spine or not? Well, this is a nice little trick. What I'm going to do is temporarily change this picture so that it is transparent. So if you right click on the picture and go down to and click on format picture and then notice this transparency section just here. So you can use this slider to drag the transparency to near enough 50% to do the trick. 
So if I drag that to near enough 50%, there we go. That's 50 exactly, that's quite good. Click on OK, and now I can see the background, I can see the guides, and I can see where my spine is. So what I'm going to do here is let's click on my text here, let's go to my border, and then just drag it so I can drag that text onto my spine like so. That's great. It looks like it's just fitting on, but because the text size is a little big, I'm just going to highlight it and just make the text a little smaller. There we go. And that's fine. And now I should be able to click on the border and just drag this up a little bit. And now I'm confident that that will fit on the spine. So if I click away, that's great. Great. So now what I need to do is I now need to add um, the back page blurb, you know, the synopsis about what the book's about, hopefully to tempt somebody to open it, read it, enjoy it and buy another book as well. Um, great. So there's just a couple of things as well. Um, one of the things is, is because I've moved this text box here and this text box is a little bigger, it's, it's encroaching on this one here. What I can do is I can do things like if I click on the border of this text box and send that one backward. Uh, as well to adjust the layers of it. It should be okay and overstack it. If not, I can move this check text box here as well so that I can see the stranger. I don't know if you notice that if the text is too big for the box, let me just do that. So I remember the name's 252. If I make it too big, notice that in the corners, you can see here, the resize handles and all of the control handles have changed to red to show that there is something which is known as overset text. It's an error. You don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to highlight, well, the text is already highlighted. I'm just going to click on this and type in 52, press enter. And now my text is back to normal again. Absolutely fantastic. I can see the text on the spine, the text on the cover, my author. That is great. So now I need some blurb. So what I'm going to do is firstly, I'm going to draw a text box on this side of the page here. So I'm going to click on inserts. I'm going to click on draw text box. And I'm just going to click to drag to draw a text box for blurb. I'm not really sure how big it's going to be. But here's my text box here. I'm just going to go to the border and just drag it here. So I can just drag it roughly into the center. Again, I can get the maths out and do my calculations to make sure that it's make, you know into the center of the book there. So my blurb is available in Word. So I've got some blurb here. So this is uh, a file that I'll make available. So just you can have a quick look, a look on the computer tutoring website. So click on the link and then go to the website, you'll be able to download the link for this blurb here. So I'm going to highlight the blurb and I'm going to right click and copy and then minimize that. And then I'm just going to right click and paste the blurb into the box there. There we go. So got this blurb here, it looks not too bad. I'm just going to make this a little thinner. Here we go. That's fine. And just adjust it a bit to the right hand side here. I can also use, if I click on the border, there we go. I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard just to nudge it left and right if you just get it in a precise bit there. That's great. So with the text here, I'm just going to highlight. Uh, what I want to do is I'm just going to keep the text aligned left. That's fine. Uh, if I just want to adjust things like, um, let's have a think here. So I've got the columns here. Uh, yeah, let's change the font type. So I'm going to do a boring font. Uh, well, not too boring. Let's just do Times New Roman. Okay, so there we go. Uh, the text size, I'm just going to make a little bigger there. That's fine. That's good. And just adjust it up this way. There we go. Fantastic. Yeah, so that's good. So I can actually start to see uh, this all coming together uh, there. I've got a little drop down list so I can just decide how I want the font to, to look, whether I want it tight or very loose there. I can adjust the columns if I want to. The margin, there's a lot of options available. Back on the home tab, I can do things like into the paragraph section here in this drop down list. Uh, I can have line spacing options if I wanted to. So I can have one, two, three different uh, ones here. What I want to do is click on line spacing options because I have an option to after paragraph. This is what I want after paragraph to be, say, eight points. Click on OK and it just adjusts the gap off between the paragraphs. That's fine. Uh, what I'm just going to do is just add an extra paragraph in there. Uh, I'm just going to make the text box a little longer so it fits all the text in. That's good. Seems to be coming well, uh, going together well. Uh, so that's good. So that's all lined up. This is all lined up. It all's looking really good. What I need to do is just right click on the picture. I'm going to go to format picture and check the transparency down to 0%. So now I can see this and to start to see how this book's going to look in real life. Yeah. 
yeah, not too bad. The only issue, obviously, is the text. Sometimes if people's trying to read black text on a dark background, it might be that it just drives them a little bit crazy. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a white background in um, between the picture and the text, and we'll make that background semi-transparent, and it will just lift the text off the page a little bit. So this is how we do that. First, I'm going to go to Insert, and I'm going to Shapes, and I'm going to choose a rectangle. So Insert, Shapes, and Rectangle. I'm going to draw my rectangle just across my page like so. That seems big enough. And there it comes automatically as blue. Uh, make note that I've got Drawing Tools tab available at the top as long as I have the rectangle selected. So if you're a clicker offer, if you've got that habit, and what I mean by that is every time you've done something, you click off and you do something, you're thinking, where are the drawing tools? Well, just click back on the blue rectangle or whatever color rectangle you happen to have there, and you've got Drawing Tools format at the top there. So what I want to do is under the Shape Fill, I'm going to go to more fill colors and I want to choose a white so just drag this here all the way to the top and that I'll just zoom in so you can see that so that's the drag at the slider here that I use to drag it all the way up to the top to make sure that it's a white background and then the transparency I will just drag to around 50% here there we go and click on OK so that's great uh, now um, the outline I don't want any outline on this so I'm going to go to no outline so there's no outline on that and last but not least, if you're wondering why the text is greyed out a little bit, it's because the actual rectangle is on top of the text. So I need to send it backward, and I can do that by clicking on the Send Backward button. Just this one at the top will do the trick, and that will send that backwards. So send that backward, and now that's behind the text. Now you can all you clicker offers can click off, and you can see the glory there that is your front cover. Just want to look at a blurb at the back. I just noticed there's a couple of things that you might be asking how to sort out and remove. One of which is this little thing here as I zoom in. You notice that dreaded hyphen. Most people don't like hyphens. It splits up words. It makes it confusing, difficult to read. So how do you get rid of it? This is what we're going to do. So basically what you need to do is just highlight your text where you've got your hyphen in. Under your text box tools here at the top, notice you've got your text box there. Make sure that's click on the format and over on the left hand side you have a hyphenation button. So give your hyphenation button a click and then untick automatically hyphenate this story. Click on OK and notice that your hyphens have disappeared. So there we go. So it's just something nice and simple but I thought it might be quite handy. So hopefully that's been of help. Um, please watch out for other publisher videos. I'll talk about, talk about setting up your pages and looking at master pages, etc. to try to get your book together. But if you basically want to do a book, then there you have it. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and uh, so you can don't miss out on any videos that I, I bring. Uh, and also, if you like it, then please give it a good old thumbs up. That would be much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching.